This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. Innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa yanfa'na bima tu'allimuna. Wa zidna min fadlika ilman wa amalan wa qurban ya arhamu al-rahimin. اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وأثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا أرحم الراحمين ويا أكرم الأكرمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. so we we were continuing the discussion on the Hajj. Allah سبحانه وتعالى expressed the ruling of going from Arafat to Muzdalifa and to be in dhikr and you know constantly remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we talked about you know those you know the people and what they ask for now the discussion returns to the Hajj and it's interesting the ayat now so we're gonna let's see what it says so the first ayah is وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ And remember Allah during the specific numbered days. Numbered here meaning a few, right? So uh, in, in Arabic, if you want to say, oh, um, there's, it's just a few, you say it's, it's counted or countable, right? Because people were big on numbers. Uh, the Arabs, you know, um, <clears throat> the Arabs didn't like large numbers and stuff right <laughs> it's probably why the, the numbers is is one of the hardest topics <laughs> in arabic grammar <laughs> or maybe their dislike of numbers is because of that but um <clears throat> um so remember allah in those few num few days like in english we say several right we can be you know a few just like that um uh, <clears throat> فَمَنْ تَعَجِّلَ فِي يَوْمَيْنِ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ لِمَنْ اتَّقَى وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Right, so he says, uh, then whoever hastens his departure in two days, there's no sin upon him. And whoever delays until the third, there's no sin upon him. And for him who fears Allah, uh, for him who fears Allah, and fear Allah, <coughs> um, uh, and know that unto him you will be gathered. So what's being said here? So firstly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْدُودَاتٍ So remember Allah in the first few days, in those few days, meaning the days after the Hajj. So the Hajj, on the 8th of the Hajj, people go to Mina. On the 9th, they go to Arafat. They stay there from uh, Zuhr until Maghrib. Uh, and then at Maghrib, the 10th of the Hijjah starts. So they go to Muzdalifa, they stay there until Fajr. Then from Fajr, uh, uh, after sunrise, they go to Mina. So these areas are right next to each other. They go to Mina, they stone the largest of the Jamarat, those uh, columns. Then they go to the next um, and the next, right? Shave the head, and you know, so. so um, the main thing that, you know, the stoning on the, on the day of the 10th and then, you know, the sacrificing, shaving. So what happens is uh, that is the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, Eid. Then you have the 11th, 12th and 13th. These three days, you know, <clears throat> in, an, in a uh, narration from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayamu Tashriq, Ayamu Aklin wa Shurbin, uh, 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 so narrated by Imam Muslim. What's the, what do you mean? Ayamu Tashriq. They call it Tashriq. It's from the word Shuruq. What it means is because there's sacrificing, um, <clears throat> because there's um, and just a fake detail came to my to mind about the stoning. Because of the sacrifice, right? You have plenty of meat. And especially if you're sacrificing a camel, you're not just going to eat a little bit and let the rest go to waste, right? So what they would do is they would cure the meat, right? Cure as in they would dry the meat, right? Put some spices in and they put it in, 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 in the sun. So it's it's baked in a way which preserves it, right? So it's put, put in the shuruq, the rays of the sun. So it's called tashriq is that process, the, the ayam, the days of tashriq. So that's why the, the fuqaha mentioned 
<coughs> no, it's 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 impermissible to fast in those days because the prophet said the days of eating and drinking right and remembering allah so that's why you do the uh the 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 dhikr right after the first phase you know the uh, the dhikr of tashriq right allahu akbar allahu akbar the takbirat of tashriq <coughs> so uh, so he's saying, so remember Allah, so it's a command from the Quran, uh, in those few days. <clears throat> so now the practice was, <coughs> after the 10th of the Hijjah, where you, they go back to Mecca, and what you do is you go back to Mecca, and you, you perform the Tawaf, and if you haven't done the Sa'i before, then you, you do the Sa'i between Safa and Marwa, and then you go back to Mina. So then, on the 11th and the 12th, you go and you throw seven stones on at each of the jamarat, right? Twenty-one stones, saying takbir, making du'a in the in the process. So you um, so this so what they would do is they would do uh, so instead of having to stay three nights in Mina, you uh, Allah gave them the option of staying just two nights in Mina. So you have to stone three times, right, on three occasions. So twenty-one on three occasions. Right, seven each, each of the three jamarat on three occasions. So on the eleventh, the twelfth, and the thirteenth. But what Allah subhanahu wa taala allow them to do is just stone on the eleventh, go to sleep in mina. Stone on the twelfth, go to sleep in mina. And on the thirteenth, <clears throat> so normally Imam, for example, with Imam Abu Hanifa, you have to stone after zawal, after midday, right? And uh, <clears throat> so here, um, in, in this situation, you can go and stone before right before midday so the, the permission that's been given in this ayah is the first is called ta'ajjud right so which is basically from a ta'ajjala so what does it mean so whoever hastens <coughs> whoever wants to do it quickly and leave uh, mina so from a ta'ajjala fi yawmain after spending two days in mina and uh, he wants to leave fala isma alay. so what this person would do he would go and stone the Jamarat on the two days, on the third day, stone them early. There's different positions. The Shafi'is allow stoning at night, and you know, <clears throat> there's a whole set of positions. So, <clears throat> so stone uh, before midday uh, on the third day and leave Mina before Dhuhr comes in. If, if it comes in, you've got to stay that night. All right? So, whoever wants to do it quickly, after two days, go, leave, go back home, go to Mecca, go to Medina, whatever. You know, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ There's no sin on him. Why is there no sin on him? Because Allah has decided so. But why is, you know, specifically mention it? Because in, in the Jahiliyyah, people would, because they altered the rulings, there's confusion. So some people say, no, it's sinful to stay just two days and leave. And others would say, no, it's sinful to stay three days. Right? You have to leave after two. So there'd be a lot of confused people saying, well, you're doing, you know, you're doing something wrong. No, you're doing something wrong. So he says, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ if you do it for the two days. وَمَنْ تَأَخَّرَ فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ I'm talking about Ithm being a really heavy sin that's, you know, consequential sin that slows a person down from doing other goods. And then he says, فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ So either one is fine, right? Whoever delays until the third, no problem either. فَلَا إِثْمَ عَلَيْهِ And then there's this لِمَنِ <coughs> اتَّقَى so there's no sin and there's no sin then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs our attention back to what's the most important point not whether you stay two days or three days right liman ittaqa so uh, Abu Saud has a taqdeer basically um, liman ittaqa is um, is saying it's almost as though you're saying that this ruling applies uh doesn't do taqdeer so you're basically saying this state of no sin is for limanittaqa for whoever has taqwa whoever ha, you know chooses not to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially in these days especially in that situation of the hajj especially you know after having completed such you know beautiful and holy rites which you know you could leave there you know pure as, as a baby is right with no sins <clears throat> so he's saying, look, there's no sin if you stay two days or three days, but and, and there's no sin if you stay three days. But that's not the point. The point is to be free of sin by not doing it, right? Allah is forgiving, 
And if you make a sin, you make tawbah, you go back to him, oh Allah, forgive me, I'm sorry, I messed up. Allah will forgive you. He's ghafoor and rahim, remember? But the point is, Allah is directing us to be at a higher state where we're not doing things, you know, where we refine our things, ourselves, so we're not doing, we don't commit sins that, um, <clears throat> you know, that would require tawbah. Even though tawbah is a beautiful act, and, you know, those who make tawbah again and again, Allah loves them, but, you know, someone that doesn't commit the sin in the first place is, you know, in a better situation than someone that, you know, does, right? <clears throat> Allah loves both people, right? Someone that uh, has taqwa, Allah loves them, right? And someone that commits sins, but, you know, for whatever reason, people have their own situations in life. But, you know, but, you know he's, he, he commits a sin, he messes up, but he keeps going back to Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me, oh Allah, forgive me, oh Allah, forgive me. This is also someone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. But we want to we wanna be uh, of the category that of, of both those that have taqwa, but they still keep making tawbah, right? Oh Allah, forgive me for not, you know, you know, praising you enough and thanking you enough you know um even though it's not a sin but you know awah and awab in other words for tawbah higher degrees you know which we'll discuss in due course inshallah ta'ala um <clears throat> so so then he says um what taqullah so then reminding us of the main point again so have taqwa of allah literally what we said taqwa is to deflect the punishment of allah but which why would you do this why would you deflect an oncoming punishment because you're aware of the severity of the punishment so you're afraid of the consequence so in effect you, you know you're fearing allah right but how beautiful is this honestly and fear allah something's you know serious and know annakum you to him are going to be resurrected and gathered, actually, that's a better translation. That I know that to him, to Allah, the one who he's just told you to have taqwa of, you're going to be gathered to him after you're resurrected. Everyone's gathered to an area surrounded by angels. And that's where the, you're judged. So he says, know that to him, the supreme being, you're going to be gathered. And how beautiful is this, this hashir is gathering after just talking about Arafat where everyone's there on one field making dua, praying. When they go to Muzdalifa, everyone's there in one place. They go to um, uh, Mina, everyone's there in one place. They all go to the, you know, Makkah, to the Kaaba to perform their tawaf. Everyone's there in one place, the Sa'i, everyone's there trying to do it at the same time. After all of these and what it's like and all these people and some people are stressed and some people are in difficulty, some people are struggling, some people are, you know, in a better situation that, you know, it's easier for them. Some people are helping others. After all of this, he's saying, no, they're all going to be gathered to him, right? <clears throat> and the focus on to him is not that you know, anyone else, like you're going to go to him, not someone else. No, the focus is that they're going to be gathered. And where him, you're gonna to go to him, you know, who he's told you to you know be like this. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us both of the you know the quality of taqwa and tawbah and these people devote themselves to the proper dua and proper obedience and you know slavery to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it says what <clears> taqullah <throat> and wa and know know this. It's like you know, you know, you know your name, right? And you know, if someone comes up to you, if your name's Zaid and someone's you know I, I, I had a classmate in school and a non-Muslim and he was a nice man, a nice guy and he just called me Dave, <laughs> hey, hey Dave, <laughs> but you know I know that's not my name, I know what my name is right, but if someone comes up to me and calls me a different name, it's like you know that's not your name and you know what your name is, so uh, you, knowing is a strong level of you know <clears throat> certitude right, so know that this is what's going to happen. So we ask Allah for Afi in this life and the next. And then, <clears throat> so he says, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now moves on. You know, if you're talking about people and uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just highlighted in a couple of in a couple of ways the importance of taqwa and these these things. So and then he he he's distinguishing separate people into two broad categories right you have people that are like this and you have people that are like this this group you might they might seem yeah wow look how you know look how nice they are and look how decked up they are and look how cool and fashionable this person is and you know 
you don't want to be like them. And then there's these other people there who you know, you know who Allah loves, and they're they're the people who should be like right. <clears throat> so he says, so what is it? Woman and We saw in Surah Al-Baqarah. It's like Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about the hypocrites. You know, saying that people like this. Would you believe that there are, there are people like this? And yes, they are, they, they actually are from humanity. You know, even you know because this quality is not something a person, a real person would do. But you know, that's the general usage. It's I don't think it's implied here. It could be implied. Um, but the point here is people are of two groups, two types. Woman and Nasi, and of the people. Uh, من يعجبك قوله في الحياة الدنيا ويشهد الله على ما في قلبه وهو ألد الخصام. Wow. Another people is he whose speech pleases you in the worldly life, and he calls to Allah to witness uh, as to what is in his heart. Yet he is the fiercest of opponents. Not necessarily opponents, but people who argue. You know, stubborn arguments. What does this mean? وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا So this has been interpreted in a couple of ways. So what is يُعْجِبُكَ from عَجَب to be wonder, right? In wonder. But what it means is if something impresses you, you, you like it, it's like a wow. Uh, this is called إِعْجَاب, right? So you're not in wonder. It could be wonder, but it's like something like wow, I really, I'm really impressed by this. So he said, you know, people are those whose words will impress you. Now you've got this uh, <clears throat> right? Allah. So now this word fil hayati dunya, these words uh, you could say about about so there are two positions. So in, in grammar it's called uh, you know what is this construction of this particle and, and you know the words that are under its effect? What is it connected to? Is it connected to yu'jibuka or is it connected to qawlu? Right. So this leads to two positions. So if we're saying that this fil hayat dunya is connected to yu'jibuka, the meaning would be, and from amongst people, there are those whose words will impress you in this life. Right, so what the ulama mentioned is, <clears throat> and if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection, and uh, but he's saying that you know, someone um, whose words would impress you in this life, he's got the gift of the gab, you could say, like we say here, that <clears throat> he can talk, and when he talks, he thinks, Wow, he knows what he's talking about. There's elegance and grace in his words, he's convincing, you know, he'll put forward, you know, what seem like strong arguments. He'll do things, he'll say things that make people think, you know what, yeah, this is what I want to be like. This is, you know, this is the right person. He's, he's got, he knows how to be, right? And, and in the Akhirah, so regarding, so he says, and from most people, there are those who say, whose words will impress you in the dunya, which implies that in the Akhirah, no, right? Because, you know, the hypocrites going out there, oh, we believe in Allah and His Messenger, we support Allah and His Messenger. They go to the Messenger of Allah, Nashhadu inna kala Rasulullah. You know, they would say these statements. Allah would, you know, say, well, they're saying it, but they're lying, right? And so in the Akhirah, his words might seem impressive, but where he ends up and what his true deeds, you know, you know what, what he's done when they come out, when people can see, they'll be like, what? You know, we were impressed by him. By what he did, look what, look how he is now, right? You know, doing all of this, and you know, where supporting the messenger, and you know, in reality, they're working against the messenger, like those people who built the mosque, their own mosque to to harm the Muslims. You know, th th this sort of attitude, right? So you know, a good, friendly, you know, impressive statement in, here in the dunya, but you know, but there are other actions that they won't be happy about, and there are other actions that you won't be pleased with, right? So Allah protected us, and you know this this level of you know hypocrisy and nifaq, right? Uh, you know, Billah. So that's one interpretation. The other interpretation is, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Amongst people are, are those whose words uh, regarding the life of this dunya will impress you. Uh, and this is, I, I believe, this is a stronger meaning. It's also something that is alluded to in Surah uh, al room both are valid, right? And that's the thing about the Qur'an, it gives us, in many situations, you know, multiple meanings, 
sometimes they're all valid sometimes it's a dominant one and but both of these are valid but <clears throat> this one the meaning would be that you know, from amongst people there are those who's in this uh, uh, whose words about this life the dunya will impress you they talk like they know what's going on they know if you, they talk about politics they've got it down you know they'll talk about economics and they'll talk about this they'll talk about that they'll suck you into the dunya you know um <clears throat> they, they'll convince you you need to have you know that ribbery interest based you know loan you know to get this in life to get that in life or they, they'll convince you you have to have the latest fashions and you know i've got the mont blanc pen or i've got this you know this diamond ring or you know i've got the you know i've got the the flash house in the car and all of their focus and attention and everything is dunya 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 and if you say to them, well, you remember, you know, you've got a creator, God, forget that. It's just dunya. But, but when they talk, they impress, right? So someone, all he knows is the dunya. Has no idea about the akhirah that is coming. Has no idea what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, demands of him, you know, for the very virtue that uh, of, of the fact that <laughs> Allah created him. Had it not been for God, he wouldn't have been around. You know, this person would have been around. So, you know, all he talks about is dunya and he impresses others with it, right? وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ And he says, uh, and he makes Allah witness to what's in his heart, right? And, you know, this is something else that they do, right? That, you know, when someone calls them out, or oh, you're doing this, that's wrong, or, you know, you know, sort of doubts in uh, in their hypocrisy and their nifaq or whatever, or you know, because generally, as we know from Surah Muhammad, as we'll see, inshallah, um, one of the things about hypocrites is uh, they can't help give slight insults, indirect. And if you know someone like that, you know, like, it's, there's a sign there's hypocrisy there, right? Well, yeah, there's Allah protectors, but you know, someone that you know, will give an indirect sliding. I look, either say it outright or be quiet, right? You know, that's a better approach than someone that, you know, this, you know, they'll make an insult. And if you were to, it's, it's usually too subtle to directly address. Because if you say, well, why, why are you saying this? Oh, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying in general, I'm saying about so-and-so. You know, it's like, it's like that. <clears throat> so it's, it's, you know, وَلَا تَعْرِفَنَّهُمْ was it? في لحن القول right Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Muhammad that's the quality but then when, when someone you know highlights this what you're doing وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ Allah knows I didn't mean this uh, you know he, he makes Allah a witness you know to what he's claiming is in his heart Allah knows I'm sincere Allah knows Allah knows right and so he's basically you know they'll use this this because they know how people believe me, these foolish believers or these foolish people, you know, you know, they, they seem to think that believers or, you know, in a lot of cases, religious people are just stupid, right? <laughs> no, just because they don't want to go out and be vindictive or whatever, doesn't mean they're stupid, right? So they say, you know, Allah knows what's in my heart, right? I'm, you know, I'm being sincere, right? You know, don't judge, don't judge me, right? You know, if you go an action that's wrong, and someone says, look, this is wrong right allah knows what's in my heart you know that, it, 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 that kind of attitude right <clears throat> so you know uh, so it's basically a claim that he's making that whatever he's like you know where if someone criticizes him or if he's you know hypocrite his nifaq is, is highlighted right um he's basically there's no iman there in the first place Right, remember this is in Medina, he's talking about, you know, not talking about, you know, he's talking about Medina, he's talking about, uh, you know, they're, they're caught, you know, building this mosque, Allah has, you know, exposed them, saying that they build this mosque, diraran, you know, to harm, you know, the believers, right, and no, no, I, I you know, Allah knows what's in my heart, I'm being, I'm being sincere, right, yeah, so, and then, وَهُوَ أَلَدُ الْخِصَامِ, and, and he's, you know, the word alad, from Lidad, it's Lidad, I believe the word is the singular, but um, it has a meaning of uh, fierce argumentation. And Khisam from Khusuma is also fierce argumentation. So he's intensely fierce in his arguing, right? You know, the Prophet وسلم, promised a house in the outskirts of paradise. So he described it as, 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 um, 
a location, you know. So nowadays the suburbs are the place where you want to be, right? But you know the way he's describing paradise, you know, so the outskirts, the middle, and then the highest, the, the best uh, place of, of paradise, right? So he said, out someone that just stops arguing, you know, these people they have to argue, right? There's too much salt in the food. No, there, no, there isn't. You know, the whole it, it kicks off, right? You know, just people that have to. He said, you know, he's guaranteed a place in paradise. For someone that doesn't argue, because when you argue, what happens? You get into all sorts of, you know, trouble. People say things, people, you know, regret saying things, and all sorts of stuff. Just don't argue. It's one of the. It's a sign that you know. One of the early Muslims, Dunun al Misri, he was asked, you know, like when Ashadu Nasi Ana, and who is the most miserable person? He said, Aswahum Khulukun, you know, Ali Azza Allah protectors, you know, and. Uh, he, he he said the one with the worst character. So they said, okay, what's the sign that you have worst, the worst character? He said, kathratul khilaf, getting into lots of arguments, right? And <clears throat> so he's saying this. So you know, it's a terrible thing. Allah protect us, right? <clears throat> and then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Sahih Muslim is narrated that Aisha said that the Messenger of Allah said, in the abghadar rijali ilallahi aladul khasm, right? And uh, Alad is someone who's really intense in his uh, argumentation and enmity, right? You don't want that, and you don't want to be like that. And you know, the dead to who, you know, this meaning around argumentation, and you know, and also dominating in your argumentation, right? Being fierce and dominating, and you know, not respectful, right? The worst kind of image you can think of, right? So then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Uh, and when he turns away, when he, when he goes away, with that Allah saa fil ardi liyufsida fiha wa yuhlik al harth wa al nasl, wallahu la yuhibbu al fasad. And when he goes away, he strives throughout the land to cause corruption therein and destroy crops and animals. Uh, and Allah does not like corruption. So, why that tawalla? Tawalla meaning for someone to do a one eighty and to go off. So. <coughs> Yeah, who's being addressed? Allah is telling the Messenger of Allah, "Women and nasi man yujibuka." Right? That, you know, from people, you know, there there are those whose words will impress you. Speaking to the Messenger of Allah, it could mean in you know, anyone that can be addressed. But you know, the Lord said, "He is Allah is uh, explaining the matter to him." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he says, "Yujibuka." Uh, so when he turns away from you, meaning when he leaves your company. Sa'a fil ardi. So the word sa'i is basically, it means you know, moving at a quick pace, very quick pace. Not quite running, not a dash, but in you know, like a quick, it's the fastest form, you can say, of walking, right? Maybe a, a bit of a jog to it, right? <clears throat> it's, it's, a fa it's fairly fast, right? So he, but it's used metaphorically for effort and struggle. That's why the sa'i in the hajj. Right, which is also a connection back to the Hajj. So effort and struggle. So someone puts his energies into something. With that sa'a, with that tawalla, when he turns away, he leaves and goes and goes off. Right. And another meaning, one of the there's a weaker position, which some have argued for, but it's, it's still a weak position here. Is tawalla meaning when he uh, with the asbah and when he becomes the ruler or a governor of a people or a place, he does certain things. Right. So he, he does these things. Sa'a fil ardi li fiha. He strives and struggles, you know, he, he put directs his energies fill ard in the land, wherever he is, in the country, wherever he is. So it's he, he used the word ard, it also almost makes you imagine the entire planet. Like if you could cause problems everywhere, he would. Sa'a fil ard to cause trouble. That's what he wants to do. That's his action. That's where his energies go, go into. Liyufsida fiha wa yuhlik al hartha wa nasal. And they say that this is. Uh, about uh, what's his name, Al Akhras ibn Shuraik. Um, this man he went and he went to Taif and he killed, you know, anim uh, uh, he killed lots of he killed people's crops, uh, sorry, burnt people's crops and killed their animals. <coughs> That's one uh, interpretation. With that, so basically, this guy, you know, he, he'll talk. And he's got the gift of the gab and think, oh, he's a good guy, look at him, whatever. Either 
he shows he's good and then he does all these bad things or you know when it comes to Adonia he's like wow you look at him and think you know he knows what he's talking about but in reality you know like if you look at his deeds he's look at you know the worst deeds and an argumentative person and you know, he just, it's just there's no deen there there's no connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah protect us right with that Allah sa'af in ardi liyuf sida fiha and fasad word fasad is for something to be uh, imbalanced Right, whether it's a little or a lot, it's there's a balance of the way she thinks should be to work optimally, and to tip that balance is called fasad. Why liuhlik al hartha wa nasl? Right, to um to destroy crops and land and nasl literally means animal, uh, uh, it means children. Right, but here the other man mentioned, you know, people's crops and land. So basically, any form and sort of harm he can do to people. And their property, he'll do it. No care, no concern, right? Uh, you know, he'll argue, um, you know, uh, obscenely, you know, the Khasam of Fajr, the Prophet ﷺ described a hypocrite that when he gets angry, when he argues, he starts swearing and these sorts of things. And, <clears throat> you know, and so he'll have nice words initially, and then, you know, uh, fake promises and fake oaths, oh, look, Allah knows, you know, these sorts of things. And you know it, it it goes ruins people's relationships, causes them to uh, you know argue and fight with each other. These sorts of things, these terrible qualities, right? And then Allah says, "Wallahu la yuhibbul fasad," and Allah does not like, so literally does not love. So there's a dislike and a hatred. Allah does not like fasad, right? So fasad is he likes things to be balanced. That's why he's revealed you know prophets is revealed laws he's given us the actual thing of balance as we know from surah al-hadid that you know, allah's giving us a balance you know even the scales are a manifestation of this so people are wrong allah doesn't like facade this corruption but this is all this person seems to do it's his speciality right so someone like this and you stay away from him right and <clears throat> أَخَذَتْهُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِثْمِ فَحَسْبُهُ جَهَنَّمْ وَلَا بِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ And when he said to him, fear Allah, pride in the sin takes hold of him. Sufficient for him is hellfire. And how wretched is the rest, it is the resting place. Right, a'udhu billah. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ إِتَّقِ اللَّهِ When someone says to him, fear Allah, right? Now, you know, if if you're doing something that clearly you know is halal, right? <clears throat> you're drinking some orange juice, right? And someone says, "Ittaqillah." Right? Clearly, you can say to him, "Look, you don't know what you're talking about. This is fine." But if you're doing a sin, then humility, would, or if you're in a sinful situation, and you know, and you know, people can fall into sin. The Sahaba, you know, this happened with the Sahaba, and you know, so. <clears throat> Uh, like the story of you know, anyway, so it's right? So if someone says this to you, so up from humility, that you stop at that point, and even if it's something that's you know arg questionable, arguable, right? You know, maybe it's best to stop in that situation. If you know you're you're not doing anything wrong, and someone says it, and that's a different thing, right? But generally, if you're doing something wrong, and someone says what you're doing is wrong, you don't start blowing up on them and saying, well, who are you to tell me what to do and who are you to say ittaqillah to me and, you know, <laughs> you know, in the Arab world, you know, there's like a, there's a dua to say, Allah yahdik, Allah guide you. But it implies that, you know, you're misguided or you're doing something wrong, you know, may Allah. And you know, some people get offended by that, Allah, Allah yahdik, what? Allah yahdik anta, may Allah guide you, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, so here, when someone says to him, stop, fear Allah, what you're doing is wrong, all this corruption, and you know, أَخَذَتْهُ This is the power of the words of the Qur'an. Now, when أَخَى, the Kha is a very powerful letter. الْعِزَّ <coughs> and the Ayn and the Zai together with the, the two Zai's and al-izza so izza strength might power in some context some context it means being rare uh, but here it's this this defiance right this akhadathu defiance seizes him so it's like literally he's under the control of so izza similar to the word like urdu word izzat right which is like self-respect right so but that's you know um <clears throat> 
your reputation, your self-respect, your the way you conduct yourself. But here it's it's just this it's a negative con. Uh, Izza can be positive, right? For in the the strength of character and just strength of of you know status and stance and position, right? Final Izzat lillahi wa li rasulihi wa lil mu'mineen, right? As we see in Surah Al Munafiqun. Uh, so it's a positive, but here it's negative, right? And how do you know? Bil ithm, which is the bar meaning to be surrounded with, with sin. It's like he's dripping with sin. His whole situation, him, his actions, his deeds, his words, his lies, his false promises, his argumentation. All of these things, right, is all and everything, they're all lies and they're all sin. So it's like he's su surrounded by it, dripping in the sin. And when someone says, Fear Allah, stop what you're doing, he becomes really defensive. <laughs> so it's really powerful. So the the izzah takes him, seizes him, so he's under its control and he's like, you know, um, <clears throat> or he like takes it on this, this defiant quality. And <clears throat> so Allah says, فَحَسْبُهُ jahannam. So, you know. It's all like this. It's difficult to translate this, you know, the meaning that comes across. He says, sufficient for him is hellfire. <clears throat> the, what you'd actually translate it as is sufficiency, the thing which is his sufficiency, right? Like your sufficiency, the thing which you suffice yourself with, the thing which all you need to, to have your... Uh, the only thing that is required for your needs to be fulfilled is your uh, sufficiency, right? So <clears throat> his sufficiency <coughs> is Jahannam, Waliyadu Billah, Allah protect us. Jahannam, as we've said before, the hellfire with the word having a root of being, you know, a deep place, but also uh, the root meaning uh, of, you know, anger and so, so, something being frowning at you out of anger so he's angry and exploding on all these people you know, like having all these arguments and everything and who who you would say to me if you're allah you know i'm not doing anything wrong and all this this attitude you know this angry hellfire is enough for him that's his sufficiency it will take care of him don't worry right what a bit this is also very powerful the way it would be the hard stop on the hamza and the lamb before it and then there's just something I haven't put my finger on here with the word mihad. So a mahad, as we talked about in uh, other surahs, a mahad is basically, it's like a cot, it's a crib. It's a soft place that you prepare to put a baby in. You put a baby to sleep there, right? But, you know, the mihad is it's also a place where you go to rest and, you know, if, you know where you end up. And, you know, to it has nuances of something being soft and gentle, right? Prepared. You know, with, with you know attention, and he says, "What a bit, bit sell mihad, and what a terrible place his you know hell is uh, as a mihad, right? And that's where he's gonna go. It's mocking. It's it's mockery of this person. That you know the place where he's gonna end up. Where you end up gonna end up in a nice, comfortable, relaxing place, and what a terrible, relaxing place this is, right? It's not relaxing. There's it's torment and punishment, but that's what he's been asking for. That's what he's working towards, right? And there's that." So then <clears throat> we just quickly look at the next ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, <clears throat> وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ بْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ اللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ And so that's one type of person. And from uh, people, from, from amongst humanity, is someone who would sell himself, why? ibtigha to purchase the pleasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those things which please Allah, whether it's charity, whether it's tahajjud, and whether it's, you know, helping others, whether it's being patient with the difficulty, all of these actions that people do to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is, um, Allah is comparing them or describing them describing them as as though the actions where people are purchasing something so you know the price of the pleasure of allah so you, you do an action and it's good like in allah la yardu anil abdi idha uh idha akla al aklata fa yahmaduhu alayha aw shariba shurbata fa yahmaduhu alayha allah is pleased allah loves it when a slave eats a morsel and he thanks allah for it he praises him for it and he loves it when uh, a person um, <clears throat> drinks uh, something and he praises Allah for it, right? So, you know, this is it. It is really powerful, right? So, you know, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares the action which leads to uh, Allah's pleasure as the action is like 
he's selling himself in order to gain that like he's selling you could have money to buy something with but if something is too expensive you've given everything away all you have is yourself they're going into slavery basically all you have is yourself here take me right so he in the from amongst people are those who would sell themselves and there are people who Abu Bakr and gave everything away right Talha ibn Ubaidillah at the battle of Uhud you know there are arrows coming towards the Prophet and he's literally jumping in into their path isn't this selling yourself isn't this doing everything you can to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just look at this, right? Uh, so, Someone who would sell his own self to, out of seeking in a strong way the pleasures, not the rida of Allah, the marda, mardat, plural. And marda, it's, the mardat, it's, it's a master mimi, it's a very powerful way of expressing this thing which really does exist, you know, it's this, the pleasures of, the pleasure of Allah in all of its manifestations, manifestations, the pleasure of who? The supreme being, Allah, who has all the qualities and attributes of perfection. There are people that will sell their lives, give themselves away, you know, just for that, right? Wallahu ra'ufun bil ibad and Allah, the Supreme Being, to His servants, <clears throat> to all servants, right? But especially His chosen servants, especially the people that devote themselves to Him. Wallahu ra'ufun. And the word ra'uf, ra'uf comes from ra'uf, which is an intense form of mercy and, and you know, care for, for someone. It's stronger than rahma. Rahma is. Where you know you have care and concern, and you want to do good for someone, um, even if it means them going through a bit of difficulty, right? So, for example, you know, uh, a child that's going to put his hand in the fire, rahma would mean maybe smacking the child or you know, shouting at the child, you know, don't do that, right? To to you know scare the child from you know getting into a situation where there's further harm, right? Worse than you know. So that's why you know you have tests in life and all these things, right? Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes can put someone through a difficult situation and they, you know for them to benefit, right? So rafa is and having rafa doesn't mean you don't have rahma. <coughs> rafa is such intense care that you know like for the Prophet, it's just he's described as Ra'uf. Like he feels a lot of pain at seeing others in pain. The intense care would make you want to, you know, do anything to help this person. There's a lot of empathy and, you know, for this person, you know, and, and care and concern. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as this. You know, obviously not having human emotions, but care and concern, deep intense care for his servants, right? Wallahu uh, ra'ufun bil ibad. Right, and um, you know, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, you know, with the Lord like this, Alhamdulillah, right. So let's end it here and we'll continue from here. From here. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala wa sallam. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.